This event marks the eighth ceremony involving Sunderland <laughs> Elementary School in the town of Sunderland. Veterans Day is intended to honor and thank all military personnel who served the United States in all wars, particularly living veterans. Now, students of Sunderland Elementary School, the message I would like to share with you this morning is brief, but very important. This impacts all the veterans who are here with us today, as well as some of your teachers and even some of your classmates. <coughs> the message is about family and sacrifice. As we give thanks and offer support to the men and women who serve our country, we must additionally recognize and thank the relatives, grandparents, parents, and children who have a loved one serving in the military. Members of the military often have to spend a significant amount of time away from home. This is a sacrifice on both those who serve and their families, and it is a sacrifice that should be acknowledged and appreciated. Americans would not be able to experience the liberties that we do without your commitment, service, and dedication to our nation. Over the past few years, the students of Sunderland Elementary School have showed support for veterans in numerous ways. In addition to participating in the annual Veterans Day Observance Ceremony, our students have sent care packages to troops overseas, written letters of support, and visit the Soldiers' Home in Holyoke every February to deliver Valentine's Day cards to the veterans. Possibly joining us today in representing the Massachusetts Department of Veterans Services is Mr. Bennett Walsh, Superintendent of the Holyoke Sol Soldiers' Home. Welcome, Mr. Walsh. I would now like to welcome retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Dan Van Dalsen, a Sunderland resident, to the podium. Colonel Van Dalsen will first read a Veterans Day proclamation from Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker. He will then introduce the military guests who have joined us today. Welcome, Colonel Van Dalsen. We invited Governor Baker to attend today, and, and you know how busy governors are. He couldn't come, but he sent this proclamation so that you would understand the importance of Veterans Day and help you understand. So this is entitled The Commonwealth of Massachusetts. This will hang in your school after today's ceremony. The proclamation. Whereas since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas on November 11, 1918, the armistice was signed in the forest of Romeo, the Allied nations of Germany in World War I, which was the war to end all wars after four years of conflict. And whereas since that day, every November from around the nation, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas there are approximately 388,000 veterans currently living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifice and contributions of our veterans to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage, and whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2016 to be Veterans Day and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this first day of November in the year 2016, in the independence of the United States of America, 240. It's signed by Mr. Baker, Governor Baker, Lieutenant Governor and the Secretary of, of uh, the Commonwealth. Well, let's say this will hang in your school after today's event, so you can take a closer look at it. I would like to introduce the military guests. Uh, ever since this event started eight years ago, 
the military from Westover Air Base and from the ROTC detachments at the University of Massachusetts have been tremendously supportive, so we want to thank them for being here today. Representing the United States Army is Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Mangner, who is the commander of the Minuteman Battalion at the University of Amherst, the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Captain Giles from the 302nd Maneuver Enhancement Brigade at Westover. Captain Marcius from the Springfield Military Entrance Processing Station. First Sergeant Roll from the Military Entrance Processing Station. Master Sergeant Fricat, who is from the 302nd Maneuver Enhancement Brigade. Sergeant First Class Simmons from the Minuteman Battalion at UMass. Staff Sergeant Sweet from the 302nd Maneuver Enhancement Brigade at Westover, and Specialist Wreck, also 302nd Maneuver Enhancement Brigade. <laughs> Representing the United States Navy is our guest speaker, Lieutenant Commander Liberato, and Chief Petty Officer Ramos, both from the Springfield Military Entrance Processing Station. Representing the United States Marine Corps, our Lieutenant Evers, Staff Sergeant Pascoen, and Sergeant Winbush from the Marine Air Support Squadron 6 at Westover, and from the Marine Wing Support Squadron 472 at Westover, our Gunnery Sergeant Daniel and Gunnery Sergeant De Leon and Staff Sergeant Rolo. <laughs> Representing the United States Air Force is Lieutenant Colonel Gruber, who is the uh, Air Force Detachment Commander at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Tech Sergeant White from the University Detachment. Staff Sergeant Cleveland from the Springfield <laughs> Military Entrance Processing Station. Staff Sergeant Williams from UMass Amherst Detachment 360. Staff Sergeant Williamson is here from the 439th Air Wing Honor Guard. And Senior Airman Balderskin, also from the 439th Air Wing Honor Guard. Then we have a number of Army cadets who are freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors at the university representing the United States Army Minuteman Battalion. <clears throat> the first is uh, Cadet X3 Connery, Second Lieutenant Seagull, Cadet Sergeant First Class Carney, Cadet Sergeant Blaney, Cadet Corporal Acosta, Cadet Corporal Benz, Cadet Corporal McConley, and Cadet Private Patel. And then finally, we have two buglers today representing Frontier High School. Ella Dean, who is a junior at the high school, and Felion Koski, who is a sophomore. I'd just like to have everybody give our uh, guests and Googlers a, a round of applause. Thank you, Colonel Van Dalsen. Our guest speaker today is Lieutenant Commander Robert B. Liberato, United States Navy. Lieutenant Liberato is currently the commander of the Springfield Military Entrance Processing Station. He began his military service in 1999 when he enlisted in the Navy at the Honolulu Military Entrance Processing Station. Over the course of his military career, Lieutenant Liberato has held many different assignments. Additionally, he earned a Bachelor of Science of Information Systems from the University of Hawaii Hilo and a Master of Business Administration in Human <coughs> Resources Management from Trident University in Cypress, California. His awards include four Navy and Marine Corps Accommodation Medals, four Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medals, and various Unit and Service Medals and Ribbons. He also <coughs> earned the Navy Surface Warfare Officer Insignia. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's with great pleasure that we welcome Lieutenant 
Commander Robert B. Liberato. Good morning. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak here today. It is a great opportunity and privilege to be here. For almost 100, year, 100 years, Americans have paid tribute to the nation's veterans with ceremonies that awaken every emotion from satisfaction to sorrow. At a similar gathering tomorrow in Virginia, the president will place a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknowns at Arlington National Cemetery, a gesture that symbolizes dignity and reverence for America's veterans. Closer to home, my unit, the United States Military Entrance Processing Station, or MEPS as we like to call it, located in Chicopee, oversees the enlistment processing of young men and women. And as the commanding officer, I get to see the, the uh, young men and women who pass through our facility doors. What we, re what we refer to as freedom's front door. It's inspiring to see these great young Americans raise their right hand and pledge themselves to duty, responsibility, commitment, and sacrifice for the sake <coughs> of the nation. It is especially impressive since many of them have lived the majority of their lives as witness of the 9-11 terrorist attacks and in a time of war. Still, they answer the nation's call. Like so many generations before, they will forever be Americans' veterans. Throughout my life, November 11th was referred to as Veterans Day, but originally it was Armistice Day, a, commemor a commemoration of the truce signed by the Allies and Germany in World War I. For the very first time in 1918, in the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, Americans stopped whatever they were doing and honored our veterans. Throughout Memorial, although Memorial Day and Veterans Day both honor those who have served, Veteran Day honors all Americans, veterans. Throughout my career, I have deployed five times during Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Operation Enduring Freedom. During my most recent deployment, I was the administrative officer and exchange officer in Djibouti, Africa, working with the locals, French and Japanese, building relationships throughout the region. With the experience I have with the five deployments behind me, my family and I understand the sacrifice of the military service. And with that being said, I thank all the veterans and their families for their service and their sacrifice. Today is our day to celebrate veterans. It is our day to thank them for their service that they have given to our country. Our veterans have volunteered to serve our country and with that comes a lot of sacrifice, whether it is a weekend away at training or trips overseas. Every veteran has given up time from <coughs> home and their loved ones. If you have a veteran in your family, you have made sacrifices too. You had to be strong when your veteran was away at training, and you had to hold up the fort until they came back. Whether it was a short time or a long time, you were part in making that veteran successful. Veterans Day is about celebrating all the sacrifices our veterans have made so we can continue to live free, freely in America. So for me and my fellow veterans, it's like having an extra birthday. We don't get presents, but we do get the same feeling inside like when it, it is your birthday. Everyone sees you and says thank you. And like today, everyone who walked by me um, and came in this morning, thank me for, for my service. And everyone celebrates what you have done for America. Sometimes you get cards in the mail or letters on your table when you sit down at lunch. Someone is thanking you for what you have done. So on this Veterans Day, I want you to think about all the amazing things our country has to offer that our country that other countries do not have. We have great places to go to school. We have our freedoms to grow up and be anything you want to be. So if you want to grow up to be an astronaut and go to the moon, you can do that. If you want to grow up to be a nurse, doctor, teacher, or fireman, the sky's the limit. You can do anything you put your mind to. All you have to do is work hard, treat others with respect, and keep reaching for your goals. So on this Veterans Day, ensure you find at least one veteran and say thank you, and I promise you that you will get a huge smile from that veteran because you have just made their day. Just like me coming here today to talk to you has made mine. Thank you.
you, Lieutenant Liberato. At this time, please direct your attention to the flag, where the Westover Air Reserve Base will be lowering the flag. While Veterans Day is a tribute to America's living veterans and is more a celebration to play a solemn remembrance, it is always appropriate to include a moment of respect for those who gave their lives to our country. One way that we show respect is to fly the flag at half staff in memory of an important person who has died. When a person in the armed forces has died while serving our country, the song Taps is also played in their memory. The Westover Honor Guard will now lower the flag to half staff while Taps is played by Frontier Regional Band students Ella Dean and Phelan Kosky. The flag being used for this demonstration was gifted to the students of Sunderland Elementary School in the fall of 2014. The flag was flown at Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan over the memorial with a piece of a beam from one of the twin World Trade Center towers that fell on September 11, 2001. It is appropriate to remain still and quiet during this portion of the ceremony. Thank you everyone. Please join me in one minute of silence to remember the following. of Sunderland Elementary School will now sing My Country Tis a Thief. Sixth grade students, if you could please start us off. Thank you.
Thank you, children. The UMass Army Color Guard will now conduct a flag folding demonstration. Colonel Van Dalsen will introduce the Color Guard members, and Miss Janet Conley will read a script while the Color Guard folds the flag. <coughs> Thank you. I just want everybody to understand that these are university students, and they really put a lot of effort into um, trying to demonstrate proper respect for the flag and letting you kids see what that constitutes. The Color Guard from UMass, um, representing the U.S. Army Minutemen Battalion again are Cadet X-3 Connery, Cadet 2nd Lieutenant Rebecca Siegel, Cadet Sergeant 1st Class Sean Carney, Cadet Sergeant Blarney, Cadet Sergeant Catherine Acosta, Cadet Corporal Abigail Vince, Cadet Corporal John McCauley, and Cadet Private Nicola Patel. American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. Born on June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Order. Congress determined the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternating between seven red and six white, and that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved into the flag presented before you today. The 13 horizontal stripes represent the original 13 colonies, while the stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor. White signifies purity and innocence. Blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Traditionally a symbol of liberty, the American flag has carried the message of freedom and inspired Americans both at home and abroad. In 1814, Francis Scott Key was so moved in seeing the stars and stripes waving after the British shelling of Baltimore's Fort McHenry that he wrote the words to the Star Spangled Banner. In 1892, the flag inspired Francis Bellamy to write the Pledge of Allegiance, our most famous flag salute in patriotic hope. In July 1969, the American flag was flown in space with Neil Armstrong planted on the surface of the moon. Today, our flag flies on constellations of Air Force satellites that circle our globe and on the fin flash of our aircraft in harm's way in every corner of the world. Indeed, it flies in the heart of every soldier, sailor, airman, and marine who serve our great nation. The sun never sets on the United States military, nor on the flag that we so proudly cherish. Since 1776, no generation of Americans has been spared the responsibility of defending Today, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines remain committed to preserving the freedom that others won for us for generations to come. By displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold, we show respect to the flag and express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and who continue to fight for freedom at home and abroad. Since the dawn of the 20th century, the United States servicemen and women have proudly flown the flag in every major conflict on lands and skies around the world. It is their responsibility, our responsibility, to continue to protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we as Americans enjoy today. <coughs> the United States flag represents who we are. It stands for the freedom we all share and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish its legacy as a beacon of hope to one and all, and long may it wave. Thank you, Ms. Conley. 
Sixth grade student, Jason Dion, from Miss Von Flader's class, will now read a Veterans Day poem. Jason, please come on up. Veterans Day by Cheryl Dyson. On Veterans Day, we all honor who answered to service call. Soldiers young and soldiers old fought for our freedom, brave and bold. Some have lived while others died, and all of them deserve our pride. We're all proud of all the soldiers who kept thinking of red, white, and blue. They fought for us and our rights. They fought through many days and nights. And though we may not know each name, we thank all veterans just the same. Thank you for all you've done. And thank you, Dad, for, save, for serving our country. Thank you, Jason. All students and guests, we will now sing the first two verses of This Land is Your Land. Sixth grade students, if you can once again start us off. Thank you. job. Thank you, everyone. And thank you to our special guests, the servicemen and women who helped to make this recognition ceremony so special. We appreciate all that you do for your communities and your country. You are all cordially invited back to Sunderland Elementary School to visit classrooms, play in our new playground during recess, and eat lunch with our students if you choose to do so. Thank you, Colonel Van Dalsen, Lieutenant Liberato, and Ms. Conley, for all the time and work you put into this event. Sunderland Elementary School students, thank you for positively representing our school and community. Boys and girls, please listen to your homeroom teacher as we get ready to back, head back to school. Have a wonderful day, everyone.